In this video, we are going to talk about a very basic Java interview question. These interview questions are asked at mostly 3 and above year of experience. So let's start. First question. Difference between transient and volatile keyword in Java. Transient keyword. Whenever you don't want to serialize a field in Java, put a transient on top of it and during deserialization process it will be initialized with default value. In case of volatile keyword, if you want to read value from main memory rather than threads local cache, go for volatile keyword, always use in multi-threaded environment. For example, if you want to use a singleton design pattern in multi-threaded environment, while declaring the instance variable, we would put volatile, for example, private static volatile byte programming instance. Moving to next question. I do not want to serialize a field in Java. How can I do? Obviously, you can use a transient keyword. If you are using transient, it will not allow to serialize a variable and during deserialization process, it will initialize with default value. Apart from this keyword, one more keyword is there in Java that prevent serialization of a variable that is static. Let me know in the comment section why use of static variable prevent serialization in Java. Moving to next question. Difference between singleton design pattern and singleton bean scope. Most of us confuse with this interview question. We would say both are equal, but this is not the case. Singleton design pattern in Java ensure one instance of a class per class loader, whereas singleton bean scope ensure one bean instance for a given bean ID per container. Remember, it is one bean instance for a given bean ID per container. Singleton bean scope is also default scope in Spring. Let's understand little bit what is meant by one bean instance for a given bean ID. Suppose I created a bean annotated with bean ID bean1. I created another bean and annotated with bean ID bean2. With singleton design pattern in Java, both should be equal, but this is not the case. If you try ctx.getbean bean1 and ctx.getbean bean2, if you try to compare, it will give you not equal. Moving to next question. How to convert a string value to integer? When we code on a daily basis, we come across a conversion of a string to integer. Java provide you integer.parsint and integer.value of. If you say this, next question interviewer would ask you difference between these two to understand how much depth knowledge you possess of Java library. Moving to next question. Difference between integer.value of and integer.parse integer.parse int will give you an int value, a primitive int. It will throw number format exception if you parse a non-integer value. Whereas integer.value of will give you an integer object representing the integer value specified by the string. It will also give you number format exception if you parse an integer value. So the basic difference is integer.parseInt give you int value, integer.value of will give you object representation. Apart from this basic difference, if you understand the internal implementation of value of, it is like integer.value of passing the method parse int 
If you look at the internal implementation of value of method, you will see it is caching the value most frequently passed. So apart from the basic difference of int and integer object representation, this value of method gives you slightly space and time performance improvement for the most frequently cached value. Moving to next question. If two objects have same hash code, then how Java or JVM would return the value? If you remember, there is one more important concept in Java, contract between equals and hash code. If two objects are equal, it will give you same hash code. But if two hash code are same, it might be possible or might not be possible both object would be equal. So in this case, if two object have same hash code, you will use equals method to determine the value return. Let's understand this with the concept of hash map. In hash map, you have index from 0 to 15. Let's suppose you are storing a value, a key value at index location 2. Key would be B, value would be 2 hash code would be 66. If I store another value at the same index location 2, it will form a collision or linked list you can say. Let's understand key would be R, value would be 4. Now if I pass R in the get method of hash map, how it will understand to pick the value 4? It will do the same thing. First it will check at the first node, what is the hash code? 66. Hash code of R is 114. Both not equal. Go to next node. What is the hash code of R? 114 equal. Check the key. What is the key R? What is the key that we pass in the get operation R? Both are equal. Return the value 4. Moving to next question. How to return value from run method in Java. If you look at syntax of run method, it will give you public void run. So there is no return type in run method. Remember this point. It doesn't return any value. It doesn't accept any argument. It doesn't throw any checked exception. In order to return value, you can use callable. Callable provide you a call method and you would need a thread or a future task to execute the callable. It will return a value and you can store the value in a future object. Moving to next question. If I start two application from two different command prompt, how many instances of JVM would be created? If you are starting two different application from two different command prompt, two instances of JVM would be created. But if you are deploying two different application in a servlet containers like Tomcat, Glassfish, Wildfly, one instance would be created. In case of microservice, we prefer embedded container and embedded container are inside the jar itself. So one instance would be created. This was all about Java interview question very basic to test your knowledge. Stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming video.